Hello and welcome to Music Mondays of the Interdimensional Podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Talbot of Dimension AX23, and today we'll be joined by somebody very special. Why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, hi, I'm Jamie Talbot of Your Neighbor Dimension AX22. Lovely to meet you, Jamie. Now I hear that you'll be introducing us to a song of yours. Yes, I will. It's called Sleep, and I can't wait for you to hear all about it. Can't wait for myself. Why don't you go ahead and play? Yep, is. I don't exactly have a physical form, though. Is that okay? Of course. It's a podcast. Most people just listen anyways. Go on ahead. Okay, hope this sounds okay. I'm not at my studio right now. Um, sorry, can I start over? <laughs> okay. It's something bittersweet. Something I'm losing every night. Couldn't get it when I was young. But now I skip it. As a science class toad Never thought things would end Just stayed awake in my bed I felt that if I got a wink I would wake up from that blink Always just damn busy Who cares about me, not me I felt that if I got a wink then there'd be no time left to think Wow, 
Wow, that was beautiful, Jamie. Oh, um, thank you. Does that count as narcissism? Probably. Anyways, let's start breaking your song down. It really is a piece of poetry. Some alliteration for you. But what kind is it? It's a free verse. Of course, when tasked with writing a poem, something song-esque to be sung, <laughs> alliteration, one's mind usually goes to a ballad. But those require sticking to certain metric feed and rhyme schemes, and I wanted to go everywhere. Oh, and speaking of alliteration, you should check out line 33, where I say, sticks, stone, starvation, sleep. Oh, that was a good part. And you did go everywhere, didn't you? I saw a lot of different rhyme schemes scattered throughout. Now, there's three stanzas in particular that I'd like to talk about. Lines 33 to 44? Looks like we share the same mind after all. Indeed. That part of the song, it's supposed to feel like this time in between life and death. Something very surreal and separate. So, I gave it its own rhyme scheme. A-A-B-B. -B. Always just damn busy. Who cares about me, not me? I felt that if I caught a wink, then there'd be no time left to think. Hmm. I'm noticing something else. I know you don't care much for meter, but did you give any thought to your syllable count? Yes, I did. There are four different syllable counts I used, usually changing when it's accompanied by a different set of piano music. The first had a syllable count of six, eight, 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 and was used in stanzas one, two, five, and six. Let me take a look. It's something bittersweet, six. Something I'm losing every night, eight. Couldn't get it when I was young, eight. But now I skip it out of spite. Hmm, lovely. What about the others? The second section goes three, 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 one. I used it in stanzas three, four, seven, eight, twelve, and thirteen. But what's that? It's sunlight slept a night whole. Hmm. And the third? Well, the third and fourth would be in the surreal and separate part, as I called it. The third is where I'm speaking, not singing, in the ninth stanza. It's meant to stand out from the rest of the song. It's the initial point of realization and of stepping back from denial. So, although I wanted a consistent rhyme scheme for that section, I made sure to give it a different syllable count. 6, 11, 12, 12. The fourth would be in stanzas 10 and 11, which both went uh, 6, 7, 8, 8. It's very similar to the first one, sort of a callback to it, but you're still in that phase of really digesting that what you're going through isn't healthy, and so it needed to be marked as different. For example, never thought things would end, 6, just stayed awake in my bed, 7, I felt that if I caught a wink, 8. I wouldn't wake up from that blink. Hey. Very interesting. Speaking of which, just what is the topic or theme of this song? I feel like given the title, it should be about sleep. Well, if you thought that, you would be correct. It's an exaggeration of my own relationship with sleep growing up. At the start, the protagonist is already sleep deprived, losing more every night and counting the hours. Then as time goes on, they start feeling so exhausted that they might die. With too much sleep deprivation, you actually start hallucinating, which I made an allusion to in line 19 by saying, seeing things in peripheral. And with enough sleep deprivation, you can actually die. Of course, the protagonist doesn't, but they're so out of it and hallucinating that they think they are. And how did you work this in? Well, again, I made a lot of references to this relationship of mine. In line three, when I said, couldn't get it when I was young, I was actually talking about how as a young child, I had a physically hard time falling asleep. Melatonin tablets pretty much saved my life. They sort of trained my body to produce that wonderful drug on its own so that I could function as a normal human being. 
And judging by the course the song took, I assume that your relationship with sleep would again go on a downturn as you got older. Right again. I had a pretty solid sleep schedule until around grade 8. I'd, on the regular, get 5 hours of sleep staying up before I had to go to the high school for my AP classes. I wasn't used to getting up so early and didn't change my habits. In fact, they got worse. I remember days just trying to keep my eyes open staring at a chalkboard, which I reference in line 7. Need to glue my eyes open quick. Now, were your references to your personal experiences to sleep uh, the only references or allusions you had? No, I also made some allusions to Wicca. It was also around grade 8 that I converted before eventually leaving to carve my own path, which is why I said, Oh you God and O oh Goddess in lines 25 and 29, because Wicca has both a god and a goddess. I believe you love your figurative language, don't you? Well, what's there not to like? Metaphors like the moon almost lulling me with lullabies when, of course, the moon isn't actually singing. Allusions like the one earlier on to cyanide I made just to really accentuate that feeling of death. They're so fun and creative to make. Cyanide is described as tasting like bitter almonds, so in lines 1 and 18 I say it's something bittersweet and like almonds that have gone bitter. Exactly. That isn't just an illusion, though, is it? Nope, it's also one of the similes I incorporated. The others were as petrified as a science class toad, and my soul as empty as a trench. The last one here is also an allusion to World War II. The trenches weren't literally empty, at least usually, but they were empty of health and of hope. Wow, that's dark. I like my tea like I like my poems, I guess. Speaking of which, is there even any liquid in that cup? God, you caught me! Here in Dimension AX23, we survive off of sunlight, so... Oh, damn! You're the first to catch on! Well, it was lovely talking to you, Jamie, but we've just about used up our slot. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, it was my pleasure. I'm glad, and for all you out there, join us here on the Interdimensional Podcast next Music Monday for more beautiful content. As always, over and out.